from wherever, whenever you are listening to me, this is Michael Vaughn and welcome to Fundamentally Speaking. You have arrived at the right place to be encouraged and challenged in the word of God as you deal with life today. In this podcast, I take the fundamentals found in the word of God and expound on them in ways you may not have considered to help you grow in your walk with Father God. Father God has called you with a purpose to fulfill, and whatever that is, with a spiritual life built on the fundamentals of God's word, you will be able to execute it. And that is what this broadcast will help you to do. So if you're not driving, if you're not operating heavy equipment or (laughs) operating on people, I encourage you, get something to write with, something to write on, and don't forget your Bible. As I launch into our topic for today on Fundamentally Speaking. Well, bless God, we are in episode four. Can you believe it? We are almost through. I've got this one. And as the Lord leads, another one. And we will close out uh, this discussion. Giving not like you think. Giving not like you think. And I I pray that you have been encouraged and blessed through what we have shared with you thus far. Uh, We've been sharing with you uh, from uh, Luke chapter 6, verses uh, 36 through 45. And then we also have been, uh, the last couple of times, we've been talking to you from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 26. And we've been doing that because uh, what I've been sharing with you is that the giving that we see here in Luke chapter six is not is not just is not really talking about giving of money. It's not really what it's talking about. It's talking about giving of ourselves and how we treat others. Is that how we interact, interface, move around with whatever you want to say with others? We're giving something. We're giving off something. We are giving of ourselves and you and I need to be really mindful about how we do that. We need to be mindful of what that really looks like. We need to be mindful of what we're giving and it should be shaped by Galatians chapter five, verses 22 through 26, the fruit of the spirit is that our goal, our ultimate goal in Christendom, as it were, in our walk with God is not that I got the most miracles working through me, is not that I can uh, prophesy uh, 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 to, you know, uh, just without, I mean, just just great prophetic voice, not that I can pull down all kind of great revelations. That is all great, all good. And I love to see it. The number one thing, however, is that my life is conformed to the image of Christ. That's what we want to be. And so how great will it be to have somebody whose life is conformed to the image of Christ and they're manifesting the fruit of the spirit and pulling down revelation and operating in miracles and prophesying. Hallelujah. That is what God is looking for. And that is what we can have. And so that's what we're saying when we say give, not like giving, not like you think. We're always giving off something. We're always giving off something. And I submit to you that it should be what comes out of being conformed to the image of Christ. I left you last time uh, talking about how that when we walk through life without grudges, how much more joy can there be when you're, when you can walk down the street, be in the supermarket, uh, phone rings, be at your, be at your job, be on the bus, be in a restaurant. And you might see somebody, hear somebody that may have done you wrong, but you, you don't got any, there's no grudge there. There's nothing that you're harboring against them. How much more joy can you operate in? How much more peace can you operate in? How much more can you hear Holy Spirit if he wants you to give them a word of encouragement? Do, do, are you tracking what I'm saying? Is that there's a, I said to you uh, early on is that people are messy. We all got our issues and I might say something you that I really don't mean because I'm still growing. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to become more and more like Jesus. So I'm not going to get it right every day. And so I might say something out of my flesh, out of uh, my uh, weakness. I might say something that's not um, quite right. And, uh, it may rub you the wrong way, but you know, at my core, I'm really trying to get this thing together. Huh? And so people are messy. 
You get in situations and because of a variety of reasons, people may not treat you quite right. But now how are you going to treat them? How are you going to operate? I, I my, my recommendation here, my what I'm imploring us to do is that when we really are operating in a level of spiritual maturity, we really know that we're growing in God, is that when people do me wrong, when people come at me, when people say things that aren't the way I want uh, to hear when people are doing all kind of things, I am going to operate out of how Holy Spirit wants me to operate. I'm going to operate out of how He is leading me. And that may mean you got to die. It will mean you have to die to your flesh. And I say that because if we can go through life without grudges against people, and I'm not concerned about who does and doesn't like me, because see, wherever I go in life, whatever status I have in life is that it's Father God that is bringing me there. The Bible lets me know that promotion comes not from the north or the south or the east, but promotion comes from God, is that he puts one up and pulls another down, is that wherever I've gotten in my life, it's been because God has put me there. So wherever I'm going next, it's because God has taken me there. Are you with me? So I don't have to, I'll, I'll use kind of the secular statements is that I don't have to suck up to nobody. I don't have to kiss up to nobody. I don't have to put nobody down. I don't have to walk over nobody. I don't have to make myself look like a wonder when God wants to spotlight me. When God wants to show me off, he will do that. Now, sometimes I'm like, God, you know, <laughs> it's been a while. You know, God, uh, uh, can you, can you, uh, uh, you know, recognize a brother? You know what I'm saying? My point is, is that I don't have to be sitting there worried about who does and doesn't like me. Try to get in the in crowd. I may recognize there's the crowd over there that's so, so quote unquote, the in crowd. But I know that if I'm not in it, it's because God doesn't want me there. Hallelujah. Now, again, you know, the whole other teaching we could get into is that sometimes, you know, we're not in there, not because God doesn't want us in there, but because uh, we're afraid. God is trying to lead us there, but because of our own insecurities, our own, uh, you know, fears, we're not moving there and we're missing out. So that's a whole other teaching. But my point is, is that we can walk through our life without holding grudges against people, without being concerned about who does and doesn't like me. We're more apt to have an ear to hear what God wants out of our lives. Think about this. If I spend my time worrying about who does and doesn't like me, I'm missing out on hearing what Holy Spirit wants me to do. When I'm taking energy out of my day to harbor a grudge against someone, then I'm taking energy away from hearing what Holy Spirit wants me to do. And I shared with you how I was pumping gas um, uh, recently and there was a kink in the hose and the gas was coming, but it wasn't coming as fast. And so I had to maneuver and manipulate the hose so there was no kink and so that the gas could flow free freely. And the point I wanted to bring forth that I wanted to connect with before we launch into uh, the bulk of today is don't be satisfied with just a, a trickle anointing. Don't be just satisfied with a trickle bit of Holy Spirit flowing through you. He wants to flow freely. There may be a kink in the line, and that kink may be because of how you are giving. See, it says, given it shall be given unto you, good measure, press down, shaking together, run up, shall men give in your bosom. And so Jesus is saying, if you give good, it's going to be good. If you give bad, it's going to come back bad. He's telling us how to operate in spiritual laws here. If you forgive, you'll be forgiven. Judge not and you won't be judged. Huh? Condemn not and you won't be condemned. So if we're being condemned, maybe it's because we're condemning. If we're being judged, maybe it's because we're judging. If we're not being forgiven, maybe it's because we're not forgiving. If I'm reaping bad stuff, maybe it's because I'm giving bad stuff. Are you tracking with me? So what I'm saying is, is that there could be a kink in the line and we need to get that kink out. When folks come at us because we've wronged them, it can cause us to tap into elements of ourselves that may not show the nature of Christ. May not show the nature of Christ. First Corinthians chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse number 26. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse number 26. I therefore so run not as uncertainly. 
So I, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body. Verse 27, I keep my body and bring it what? Into subjection. Subjection to what? Subjection to Holy Spirit. Lest by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Listen, people may come at you. People will do things against you. Some may be incur- or, or uh, poked by the enemy. Some are just ignorant, not really realizing what they're doing. But whichever way, you and I need to make sure that we're keeping ourselves, keeping our bodies in subjection. I am going to keep myself aligned. Now, I may uh, it may start off a little rocky, but bless God, I want to recognize that this is not the leading of Holy Spirit. I'm ap- operating in a way that's not pleasing to God. So let me back that thing up and let me operate the way he wants me to act. So when folks come at us because we've wronged them and you may wrong them because you didn't even know it. Because people can be touchy and people can be messy. So you in their mind may have wronged them. You don't think, what in the world I do? It call, it can cause us to tap in the elements of ourselves that we may not, that may not show the nature of Christ. So it behooves us. It behooves us. Now I want you to hear the preacher. It behooves us that when we see this, when I see myself operating in ways that are not pleasing to Father God. When I see myself operating in ways that are outside of conformity to the image of Christ. When I see myself operating outside of what the fruit of the spirit is. I neither recognize it and purpose to do something about it. Don't just let it hang there. Don't just let it hang there. Let me say it one more again. Don't just let it hang there. Let's do something about it. Mark chapter seven. Mark chapter seven, verse number 20. Mark chapter seven, verse number 20. And he said, that which cometh out of a man, that, that, that defileth the man. For from within, for from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. Listen, is that when we start operating out of alignment with the fruit of the spirit, these are things that are within that need to be dealt with. We need to deal with those things because that's coming from within us. Huh? Because why? It's coming out of us. So Jesus said, for what, for, for uh, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth him. So I need to be mindful of what's coming out of me. I need to listen to what's coming out of me. Because see, what's coming out of me is what I am giving to my fellow man. Huh? And Jesus gives a list of what's coming out out of people. And he says, it proceeds from the heart. And that's where we have to be. That's where the work needs to be done. So when you see that, if, if I'm mad and if I'm angry and if I'm thinking evil about people and if I've got, if I've got lust and adultery and fornication, these, I got the, it's, that's what's coming out of me. It's not to condemn us. It's to help us. Jesus is showing the results of what's on the inside. We will go to a doctor and when the doctor says, oh, that bump that's on you is a result of this that's within you. Oh, that rash that's on you is a result of that which is in you. So what is our next question that we ask the doctor? When the doctor says this thing that is manifesting on the outside is a result of what's on the inside, what do you and I begin to ask? Well, what can be done about it? Hallelujah. So when we begin to see these things coming on the outside of us, uh, we need to ask Holy Spirit, what can be done about it? So don't just let it stay there. I've got to run here. We will close this out on next time as the Lord leads. You got to make sure that you join us here on next time. So thank you so much for listening on today. I know that you are encouraged in the word of God. And I pray that you will not just end with the good word. However, you will ask Holy Spirit on what you need to do in order to apply it in your life. 
The power of the word is in its application. And when we partner with Holy Spirit to apply the word, that is how we'll be sure to grow. Now, I encourage you to invite others to join you every week for a new episode of Fundamentally Speaking right here or on our other digital outlets. They will be blessed and encouraged as you have been. So until next time, I'm reminding you that God has a good plan for your life.